Definitely. And we're back. And we're back. And smooth jazz is and... still playing. <laughs> and what? Smooth jazz is still playing. Smooth, smooth jazz. Can I lose we my voice slim. for some reason? Yeah. Smooth. smooth. I'm a smoker. Sorry, no, I'm not. Smooth I'm not jazz. A smoker. I'm a smoker. <laughs> the most blues of voices. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. We pick up with y'all as a recap. You kind of made plans. We made them a little out of character, so that's why I want to do the quick recap. But you made plans, talked about it, talked about the Tetsu is buggering off somewhere. The rest of y'all are going to Castrovel eventually, but you guys wanted to like take some time, prep, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we're going to say y'all obviously filled Zeha in on the plans. We can say, like, y'all literally woke up the next morning, and uh, for sake of brevity, we're going to say Tetsu's gone, because we don't like him as a character. Yeah! <laughs> Plus, he is not sticking around, because he's got a very tight and schedule. It, and, in the lore drop, we, and in the lore drop, we watch Tetsu flying off in a rocket, but then another one T-bones him, and they both blow up. It feels bad. Oh, man. Poor, sucks to poor suck. Tetsu. Anyways, <laughs> it's, just a exit. it's just a, a twinkle in the sky that we see. <laughs> huh. huh. Oh well. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Tetsu doesn't need to breathe. Um, uh, oh, you blew up. Tetsu, yeah, he does need to avoid getting hit by a massive explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he's also There's invincible. still a chance. I don't know if we, we missed that. Upgrade. Well, I mean, kind of. <laughs> I mean, if I don't need to breathe, I can definitely survive just being incinerated as well. <laughs> nano machine, son. <laughs> Get nanoed. Nerd. Just an eyeball left over that's slowly rebuilding because of nano machine. To be new... fair, that's kind of how Tetsu was made into Tetsu. So. The new Got Tetsu Milk campaign cell. in the future is Got Nanos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. okay, okay. All right. But that's where we pick up. We can say you're all just for sake of timing and of the day, we can say you all kind of wake up together again, and the floor is yours. Is the plan to, when you guys filled to head in, like, to go right away? Was there any... I'm... We need to wait till the engines are done, so we have, like, a couple days to, like, that's why we did some shopping off screen was the time in which it took to get the engines properly so is this reset. is this after all of that or is this kind of still within that downtime frame yeah we'll say y'all have like you know you have you, you can leave like midday today so that's what we'll say like you you guys have a couple of uh hours to kind of kill basically great um so um, we'll, we can say one scene for everyone kind of thing one of the things that i think zeha would have done is at some point texted um the person she had was supposed to give the um, the item to, and just ask like about the lessons and like how that okay. would work. Sure, texting Jim. Yes. Uh, yeah, you get a text back that basically says, "Sure, leave the item with." Uh, I forgot the other person's name. The Vokt. I I know who they are what they speak like, but I can't remember their name. But they basically say, leave the item with them, and when you're ready, they have agreed to teach you. But you know you'll need about a week of downtime. Okay. Perfect, then I can't do that. Oh, sure. Um, oh, sure. Oh, I would give uh, what I know to be, or what I have known to be, Kaze's number and Rusk's number to Moat so that he can start doing some sort of research or contact because I know that I can't reach out and I know that it's dangerous like to reach out directly so maybe they can between you, uh, Moat and Zeha maybe they can figure something to help get information as we're going about things Okay, okay. Um, Other than that I think I have a surgery today that I signed up for because I wasn't thinking straight uh, and I would have told Dr. Len about it. Len would have wanted to know what this surgery entailed. <laughs> uh, and, and I also have a question. 
real quick. Dr. Lin, how does it feel to know that all of your uh, party members go to other people for surgeries? I was actually going to be getting to that, Karek. Thank you. Okay. Uh, right. you, but... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like, this is not really much of a surgery as much as during the moment of stress, like, while talking to the Starfinder Society, they offered him, like, a thing, and he, like, based off of what the benefits were, just agreed, and then, like, realized what he did, and then he went to you and said, please, can you be there in case something weird goes on? Well, I could be performing it rather easily, quite possibly with more ease than whoever else would be. The dime a dozen medical bozo they got running it. But sure, I'll I'll just stand there and watch. I, I suppose. I, I, mean, I bet you need I bet you need a license to embed whatever this is. <laughs> like likely, <laughs> like they actually like... they they actually employed Crick. <laughs> <laughs> My boy. <laughs> the the funny part is, I was gonna say something about like the license, like the paper of like a licensed doctor, but he just like <laughs> shuffles it away of like, yeah. like no, it's it's Ooh. fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, there's nothing there. Um, but yeah, he, he will reluctantly accompany you to your surgery. You can tell that okay. Eisen is nervous that he he chose to do this in a fit of passion, and now that it's kind of too far to back out. For sure. Well, uh. We'll go ahead and take care of that. So at some indeterminate point of the day, you guys head off to the Starfinder Society. Uh, it's not like it's not like they have to shuffle you into a super clean room or anything. It's not a super invasive surgery. You're still going to be awake during it. But Dr. Lin, uh, you watch as they kind of lay eyes and down in this medical chair. They do strap his arms in uh, for a... <laughs> Stop making faces like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they do Weirdo. strap his arms in. Yep, yep. They do strap his arms in uh, because they have told him, like, it may hurt for a second. Uh, and oh. and you watch as they... I'm trying to think of the... Like, they clearly don't scalpel open They don't open even know what they're doing? Oh my yeah. goodness. They, they attempt to grinder. scalpel open his... They attempt to scalpel open his chest, but it doesn't work. So they go get a drill. I just open my chest if they ask. Like if I, if I'm awake, I will just open my chest for them. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so basically, Eisen just they're like they're they're going to they're like you gonna grab a drill and then Eisen just opens this hole in his chest and you watch as two little Starfinder initiates that clearly have more medical nods than you do oh. <laughs> are a whole, holding these. Two little tweezers up, one each, and there's a purple and a blue looking tadpole type creature. And they walk over and they very carefully, very slowly just whoop, drop it inside Eisen. You're gonna be a daddy. Uh, during the process explaining that well these are these are a symbiote type creature. They're gonna live off you and if everything works correctly as the experiment should do, then they will provide you with some benefits. Uh, I think they do usually provide some energy, uh, bulk up people. We've we've had we've had some people be able to do quite more than they could prior. He'll uh, Eisen will like close his chest when he does. Does like the symbiote like crystallize? Like because it's being it's affected squishy. by like raw energy. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say no, like you, you can't like feel it still moving around in you or nothing, but you just have this innate sense. Like it's almost already bonded with you. And it seems like, like it is, it, it has, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. It, it has like some slight command over your body to go where it wants to. And your body will like slowly soften or open up for it. Weird. Weird. <sighs> it's got a little wormy in you. Gross, <laughs> gross, gross, yeah. gross, gross. Two little, two little tadpole worms. Trigger and it can level up that finds that gross. <laughs> True. I don't know how to... Tr I, it's very unfortunate. I don't know how to trigger warning Starfinder because there are so many gross, like weird things that you would never think of. I yeah, went for the not... weirdest option. 
<laughs> yeah, you opened your chest and then got the tadpoles. Episode trigger one, warning we... for just Starfinder. <laughs> yeah, trigger warning Starfinder. It's very futuristic. You can think Matrix. All right, cool. <laughs> um, I don't... I think Zeha would uncharacteristically just be kind of like staying at in the apartment. Maybe going sure. out shopping once and like if somebody pulled her pulled her along and that's really it. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Dr. Lynn slash moat, y'all have anything before we hit off? Um like well am I occupied by watching the surgery going on or I mean you that's not like your entire day when you oh. just it it's literally like a thirty minute surgery. You definitely could have did it, but no one likes you, so yeah, well, then I think I will go take my medical talents elsewhere. And like okay. pretty much the whole time he was here and just on his free time, as per usual, Len was in the like um, labs trying to just make a breakthrough on how to properly replicate like a vaccine to the um, adaptation virus and just running every test you can imagine. I, I don't have a medical degree, guys, I must say, with regret in my heart. So I don't know exactly what someone would do, but, you know, sciencey stuff. Sure. All the all the nurses kind of ask you to like step back and uh, just watch. Please. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that must stink so bad. That must stink so bad. I, I'm oh. just kidding. That doesn't happen. Uh, give give me a medicine roll. I suppose I can. Here comes the natural twenty, folks. <clears throat> Brace yourselves. Like a 34. I mean, it's not a 20, but it's okay, I guess. <laughs> it's oh, it's close. just a natural 19. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to hero point that. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, no, DC okay. 35. Uh, yeah, you're you actually, throughout the whole time, you've been kind of like popping down here an hour here, 30 minutes here. Like, it's it's that it's that busy doctor, busy busy content creator life like that kind of kind of thing you're like I got, I got 30 minutes here i got 10 minutes here i got five minutes here let me do something gotta make a youtube video <laughs> gotta put it on the tube put it on the black tube the black market <laughs> like uh like moat does i don't think that was what we called it speaking of that definitely not what we call it uh void, but... void tube who knows void tube something uh. like that the galaxy tube i was thinking like my my brain was thinking black hole and I couldn't think of like how to transfer that into YouTube. Just call it the that's void. That's just the internet. Right? Internet is a black yeah. hole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true, that's true. Uh, but Dr. Lin, you are uh, going through all of this research and messing with the mini samples that you've kind of had everybody make for you. So you have a lot more samples to mess with now. And you do have a, what I would call it, moderate breakthrough. You figure out how to turn some, uh, for lack of a better word, dead organic life that have been affected by the uh, by the adaptation serum into a viable option. So you no longer have to farm live people. Uh, it being only a moderate breakthrough, it requires quite the medical knowledge so it's going to be a very high dc and they can't have been dead for more than 24 hours or the adaptation virus seems to leave their body that's what you found out so far so like if you so if you kill someone then infect them with the adaptation serum then you can harvest them or no 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 you don't think the adaptation serum would infect a dead host it would they would have to it have to be someone already infected but if they happen to die, like you, it like obviously, I'm not talking about any of your PCs, but I'm talking about like other <laughs> life forms and stuff. Duly noted. <laughs> so yeah, that's a that's a moderate breakthrough for you. It's okay. basically like you don't think that's the solution, but it would be your next step into figuring out how to make it from plants or something. You know? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Yep. Think you're natural better next 19, time. yeah. I needed the 20! Yeah, DC 35 for something super cool. Oh, man. You're real bad. We need to get you some specialized tools. That would give you a plus four to these rolls. That would be helpful. 
If they would? Yeah. All right, you got anything? Uh, yeah, so I guess over the course of these days, um, first thing, Mo would have uh, switched uh, the Needler out of Wasp and replaced it with the Ionizer. Um, and then just kind of done a bit of reworking to the Needler to basically allow itself to use it as uh, a weapon with both clips still active. Um, if you need to make a engineering role for that, I can. Um, but then uh, on top of doing the stuff for Eisen, or as part of that, Mo would try to like see if there's a way to track down the um, the signal of Resk or anybody with those phone numbers, seeing if I might be able to get some sort of sense of where on the planet they might be. Uh, I don't know what methods there are for that, but if it's possible, I'd like to try. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I want to post another video to uh, both VidTube and The Void, just um, kind of highlighting uh, Omron. You know, I want to post a video showing the domed city. I want to show the inside and uh, its people from that video that I took of Wasp flying around the outside, um, just observing everything. And then I want to show the contrast uh, once the um, dome disappeared. Uh, and I'm not sure if documentary um, style. it was actually visible. Yeah, docu documentary style. Like, we had first contact. So I'll do like a little voiceover that's like, uh, I was, I was there for first contact of uh, the new. I'm not gonna do it. I can't do it right now. <laughs> I was there for first contact of this um, society that went dark uh, 200 years ago, and um, the uh, dome dropped, and all these other species came in, bringing ships to begin. But uh, this is the first exclusive footage of inside from something that was gone for 200 years. So. That's not real. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me... So we're... The guns are fine with the wasp and everything. Give me a... Physical science check... For... The contact or the location... The locating of Resk and them. 22. Okay. Uh, what you find out with that... You'd think it would be much easier if you happen to be in the vast where that planet is located. This is, you're trying to do this from probably way too far away. Uh, but for lack of better words, you think that they're on that planet. At least that's the signal is coming from still the same planet shipments are. Okay. But that, I, uh, it, I'll it, it's that. literally like the planet is pinging minus like this side, the sun side, or the moon side, like, you know. Gotcha. Nothing specific, just they're on a planet. Yep, and uh, you think, like, you, you definitely... I, I'll say with your 22 check and, like, the distance, you... It's probably... you For you, it's, like, 70-30. Like, there's a 30% chance that it could be wrong, but you think, you think it's true. Okay. Uh, I'll share that with Aizen and just let him know... Yeah, it'll be easier to find uh, more information as we're closer to the planet, you know. Too much I stuff. I figured. That's good to know. Thank you. It's helpful. All right. And then the last thing, uh, give me a computer check. You don't have any, like, profession vid tuber or anything, right? <laughs> no, I should, though. I should get something Not like that. Yet. Um, yeah, can I train that? Can, can I be, like, working towards training that? In, I think in you can always pick up a profession if you have, like, a skill rank. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. I, I yes. think. I'm, not, I'm not, not saying that is for sure rules. I think. That is my think. Okay. My Neat. think. Uh, then computers. Oof. I am definitely going to use the nugget on that. All right. Because I am not natural taking a natural one. 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 Natural one for a 15. I have got to get clout. 
24. Ooh, it okay. is better. Better, better, better. All right. Yeah, you get that video going. I'm going to say it will, like, you still have some work to do on it, and it will be fully done and up to what you want your standard to be in about another week. Okay. But you've only you've only had like two and a half, three days here, and they've been pretty busy. Like going back and forth with Arvin and the text and following eyes and around all that kind of stuff. So fair enough. Alright. Is that what everyone everyone good? I think so. Don't forget Tetsu. Oh wait. <laughs> oh wait. Ooh, he's Tetsu. gone. Out of the show. Car Carrie's just here to be a cool audience tonight. I really appreciate him. Yeah, I'm, I'm a nice guy. Picking him as cool. <laughs> He's nice. got chef's table to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys all head back to Arvin's meeting room to basically like pick up the keys to the ship. I think Arvin might still have Grace. I don't know if y'all took Grace with you in the box. I think we did. Yeah, we brought her down to the lab, but I don't think we took her out of the like. Yeah, I know she's not right. out of the box. I didn't I didn't know if y'all had the lead box or if Arvin had it, but you definitely gotta like pick up your ship, get your chit back, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you walk into Arvin and the camera zooms out somewhere else as the door mm -hmm. opens. We begin in, in a scene watching a quite young, pale skinned, white haired humanoid figure standing beside a taller pale skinned white haired woman his hand clung to her shirt slightly as he looks up at her across from them a similar looking entity much more outfit for combat stands she peers down cold at the boy before looking up to the woman he has been selected the boy clings a little tighter for a moment before the other woman nods. She pulls up her sleeve, needing to grab his hand to force him to let go for a second before stepping back with a bow. We watch as the boy and the woman outfit for combat. Zoom ahead in time, almost glitching between each scene. Five years later, he's at a shooting range. Another five years, he's in hand-to-hand -hand combat with her. And another five years, he's standing beside her outfit for war then the camera kind of flits back to the space you're at and you see that same male figure standing there beside Arvin outfit for war as you all walk in Arvin looks up at you all and he says so you are ready to go Um, I, I think so, yeah. Yes. Who, who is this? Oh, this is... Caliban. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Ah, uh, yep. This is Caliban. I... You told me that you were heading towards Casterville next, and... I assumed they could be of some use. Uh, Carrick, if you would explain your character. Yeah, uh, Caliban is kind of a, a taller figure, though not as tall as some of you hulking folk. Uh, he, he's a modest six foot uh, moat. You're a baby. <laughs> um, sure. Very, very slender, very, very lithe looking figure. Uh, kind of, kind of moves like with that, like just natural ease of. of somebody who's definitely dangerous, like kind of that wolf walk type situation. Uh, kind of grayish white hair that's short and kind of ruffled a bit. Um, very pale skin looks like, you know, the the type of skin that is just like, it, it's like a, a milky white and uh, definitely not one that sees natural sunlight often. Um, and is wearing like military clothes, but there's not really any visible armor necessarily to it. Um, he's got a very large uh, barreled revolver, uh, multi-barreled like pistol at one hip, uh, 
that's got like four barrels. It's like a hand cannon size almost. Uh, a n- very large dagger across his chest. Uh, another pistol tucked elsewhere, like a, at his boot, and then a rifle slung over his back. And he just looks like, um, you know, kind of like a, a scout type soldier, um, but just very comfortable and just kind of sizing you all up. He's got a bag slung casually over his shoulder. And just relaxed. Is Caliban he him? Yes, he him. Okay. Uh, Arvin kind of brings a palm up to Caliban. I assumed he would be helpful in any kind of in- infiltration mission towards a, honestly, any planet, but Casterville right now. I know Tetsu came to me earlier last night and said he was taking off. We've worked with Caliban before with the Starfinder Society. We trust him. Okay, so... Happy now. So you... Are you looking to get on Castravel then? Am um, I... What I was told is you're looking to get on Castravel and... I'm here to assist. Get you on the planet, move you about the planet, protect you while on the planet. Um, my specialty is infiltration, assassination, protection, that kind of thing. So... You're going into I, I a get, place I, I, filled I'll with be the first, Hold on. I, I gotta be the first to point out. Assassination and protection are two very different things. Which is it? Well, I wouldn't say they're that different. I suppose it depends on what end of the blade you're on. I mean, true, technically but... the same thing. I have to agree. I can assassinate just as well as I can protect, unfortunately. Can I make Eisen, a... Okay, but to be, f- to be fair, you're not very sneaky, yeah. Can I make an overall sense motive as I look this person over um, and they're saying, like, what their intent is? Um, I just want to... Are they telling the truth? Are they hiding something? What is the vibe that I get? Sure. Uh, go ahead and add two to your roll. Arvin eight. I'd like to do the same with Bodyguard. Not Tetsu. Tetsu. Yeah. What's his name? Yeah, you can do the same, Aizen. Plus two, that is 22. I think the plus two was for me. Yeah, the plus the plus two is to Caliban as oh. a Tetsu, but yeah, because um, you're you're, you're sensing motive, but like Arvin's introducing this character, and so he aids like eleven, yeah. Okay, uh, all I can tell you, as in, is seems like a very like a very capable soldier. Yeah. That's kind of what you get from him. Like he's not just a goofy person outfit and a bunch of random items like random weapons like he seems right. like he knows how to use each each and every one of them everything is he definitely gives a professional vibe uh he definitely seems like he is a soldier and i had the sure. 20. yep uh yeah i'll go ahead and tell you uh especially with arvin's help of the introduction he doesn't seem like he has any other, like Caliban doesn't seem like he has any other motive except for being given to you by Arvin. And just to kind of double down on that, like Arvin, like sees you look, sees you all looking him over and says, think of him, think of him as a mercenary that you do not have to pay. He's here for you. He's for hire. He will tetsu's place for now and when you no longer need him feel free to drop him back off at Absalom. he works for us so you're starfinder then that's right more or less a free agent for them to move about their teams where they need um and i'd like to also just follow that up with a general culture check like i always do when i meet someone new Oh, show. Sure. Might have, you may have difficulty in this one. Where are you from? Here comes the 40. I don't think I've seen many look like you before. 27. I would be surprised if you've seen many like me. We don't often leave our home. Uh, uh, do you want to ca- fill that in first? No, you can go. I'm. Uh, yeah. Give her your basics and one piece of interesting information. Okay. Um, so uh, he, he kind of just looks around and goes, I'm a Demai from the planet of Daimalka. Uh, you've probably not heard of it, and you're not missing it, trust me. 
Uh, and and Zeha I have heard kinda of it, right? Knows... With the you've song. heard of it, right? You've, okay. yeah, 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 you've heard of it, and it's it is a it's like a ruined world. It once was a very prominent world out in like the vast. Like it's not. It wasn't like a big empire or anything, but it had strong like several civilizations. Two of them that were constantly at war with each other, very, very advanced. And then one day, it kind of got up and just destroyed. Literally in a month, it was destroyed by uh, basically kaiju, um, kaiju colossi, whatever you call them. Um, these monsters appeared, destroyed everything, and the planet's more or less gone silent since uh, some contact has been ha found scaven and and the, i guess the interesting bit of information is scavengers often kind of go there to pick like the planet because basically the, the majority of the planet is not populated little pockets of uh uh but demai there we go um <laughs> have created some communities on the surface, but most, most of them are underground uh, and operating there. Um, but there are some, there are scavengers who go there, but it's very dangerous because these monsters that inhabit it aren't quite normal. They're massive and, and they operate land and sea. And uh, I, I guess kind of on top of that, there is, there are some kind of other pockets of civilization on the planet that it's not exactly peaceful, but for the most part, it's like a giant community. They're very united, kind of like your people. Okay. I think looking him over, um, Zeha steps forward and reaches out like her hand uh, to yours. One of them. <laughs> uh, just kind of to shake. So many hands. All four. What did you say your name was? Caliban. And he reaches out and gives your hand a shake and he goes, okay. um, it's not much to me beyond what you see and what you've been told, I suppose. She'll like grip your arm and she'll just look at you and says, welcome to the crew. Would, if you could help me not die again, then I'll consider you a worthwhile investment. Well, I'm free and <laughs> dying again, not on my list for things for you to do, so sure. She just like drops it, uh, turns around, kind of looks at everybody, a little antsy, a little like, just a little on edge. Um, shall we head out? So that's a captain. <laughs> a captain. Oh, by the way, what do you Very do on the ship? Uh... Pretty proficient in a few things. Uh, pretty good pilot. Uh, hell of a shot. Um, okay. Well, can fix up already, an engine. We've already I've got a gun there, I think. Whatever you want. What did you I say? Can do was everything the last except for computers. <laughs> yeah, except for the thing. I can, <laughs> I can yeah. do. I can work. I can operate a computer. Yes. Um, What's your computer, bud? I can turn it on. <laughs> uh, he's a twelve. Okay. Uh, or wait, uh, let me. That sheet might not be right. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's a twelve. Right. He's a twelve. Okay. Um, kind of without looking over her shoulder, um, she'll just kind of. If if we're if we're headed out if if we're headed out then, um. You can simply fill Tetsu's shoes for the for the now. We'll figure it out later. Sure. Whatever those shoes are. <laughs> For you, it'd be more of a boat, really, but... <laughs> I meant more on the ship what he does, but absolutely. Is, uh... Is Caliban wearing some decent armor or any... No armor. ...interesting technological items on him? Mm, no. Actually, his weaponry... He's got, like, a slipshot pistol, which is the most technological weapon he's got. Uh, but is his... What you imagine is his main gun is basically a four-barreled old-style revolver-type weapon. Um, and then he's got kind of like a more clanky-looking uh, sniper rifle. Um, like a coil rifle. So he's got like a rotating okay. pistol and a coil rifle. Gotcha. So n he's definitely not high-tech. And just to... Uh... Yeah. 
Shine. just to set the set the mechanical tone of it. I think operatives are the closest thing you can consider to like fantasy style rogues. They're kind of the the skill monkeys. They're pretty good at everything. That kind of, like that type of everything. Yeah, that that type of feel, and that's that's what Caliban is. So yes. And when all I right. get to run on the battlefield, I'm looking forward to smoking you all. <laughs> uh, if, if you remember, hey. Jish was an operative as well. Oh, we remember. It's mm-hmm. Jish! Mm-hmm. This is Jish reincarnated. This is us. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just airlock him immediately. Just yeah. like, oh, he, he... Uh, Among us ejected. <laughs> do it, do it. You've been voted off. <laughs> just wait till we're in, sp- we're just wait till we're in the drift and then just... A perfect Phantom. way to kill one of Carrot's characters. The party airlocks him. Alright. Floor, floor is yours. You have your upgraded ship given over to you. Arvin introduces Caliban. Caliban goes off with y'all. Caliban doesn't probably have has, Probably has a pack. Legs. That's true. <laughs> Sorry, what did Caliban do? Oh, I'm just saying he doesn't have the same upgrades as Tetsu. He can't breathe. <laughs> They were, just oh, yes. they were just threatening you. Don't worry, I was thinking about that when you guys were threatening. Me. <laughs> he's he's plenty allowed to succumb to the adaptation virus. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Oh, we have a new test subject. I, but, I, 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 I will succumb to any sickness that hits him. That's his weakness. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think one thing that we want to do for sure is probably. Um, avoid letting him on the ship until we have grace secured in her um uh hold so that we don't share that information with uh caliban i don't know if um arvin has divulged that information but hopefully he At the, even if he knows about grace he doesn't have to know where we hide her yep, yep. Yeah. Ba- yeah. basically yep, that's sure. what i was about to say arvin has told him that you guys have grace and would have divulged that information to you. Uh, that doesn't mean, basically, like in that meeting, Arvin would have said, and he knows about Grace. What that means to y'all is for y'all to decide. Like, th- that might just mean you guys have an, an AI, you know? Like, sure. Uh, just carrying Grace in, in the iron or in the lead box or whatever, um, I'd say we all kind of head to the ships and then I'll just enter the ship prior to everybody else and if you guys just wait with uh i keep your name cow no yep but it's so much like caravan and i want to say caravan instead of caliban (laughs) just like so many variations spinning in my head uh (laughs) cal um hold him outside and then and then i'll just go go and nope (laughs) i'll go in and uh secure grace and then like open the the doors for you all See how it is. All right. All right. Easy and enough. Before we head off, Caliban, it's customary to uh, take a shot of the strongest liquor at the uh, closest bar to the ship. So uh, let's go do it. Dead. I don't know if you're lying to me, but I'm not against it, so I won't question it. As long <laughs> as you're buying. Does it really matter? Uh, I didn't say I was good buying. Well, I'll buy. All right. Let's All right. Get drinks. Uh, uh, also, what are we doing? Uh, rescuing somebody, yes? I wanna... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, I, I was just going to say, like, Aizen looks at Len of, like, I don't know if she even wants to be. Like, I, I don't say this out loud, but I give you a look of, like, are we going there to, like, rescue or just check on? Like, what is, like, what is the extent in which we are? So... You you know the um I know what Arvin strife, is, which is not um, much. And yes. the political strife going on at Castrovel and Very um much. a close friend of mine lives there and I'm rather concerned about her uh safety or continued living there. So she has that check in and everyone here has been so gracious as to help. Check in. So Going to this planet to just see how she's doing. You have you contacted her? 
Do we know what her situation is? Is there fighting around her home? Is there like any yeah. information you have? Severe enough that she's been forced to go into hiding. And well. Well, okay. Well, uh, uh, well. Yeah, basically we want to see if uh she's willing to be evacuated off the planet for safety's sake. That's kind of the general idea. We know we eventually will probably end up getting mixed into the situation. We have some other business on Castrovel. But for the time being, we also have other pressing matters um, out in the vast. So we'll do what we can to get off Castrovel quickly, if that's with Sauna or with their safety guaranteed. And then off we go. So, love it, love it. Um, thought on how it could be improved. Uh, let's check with your friend if she does want to get off planet, because that's something we don't need to ask in person if you have contact. I mean, that that would that would be true if the situation were not so severe to force her offline. Oh, she can't contact no. you any longer. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Closing up the ship and joining the rest of them. I just like slide into a booth wherever everybody else is, make a comment of, you know, this could easily be done on the ship. But anyways, the drinking. Yes. Huh? I mean, don't mind me. Uh, if it's free here, it's free there. <laughs> you know, we don't let Eisen drink and drive at the same time. Of course. Speaking of that, Eisen, do you remember the path that you dexterously took last time? I don't think we want to land there. That's I think not we want really to land... going to be an option if we don't want to be seen. Well, from what you've told us, right? Sana's not on the Elven continent. She's somewhere else on the planet. Yes. Yes, that's right. I forget the exact like name of the like continent, but Len would know. Yeah, so we're not we're not She's landing the there at all. Room. We have to. We're going on a different part of the. Yes. Well, you know that the prior conversation as to addressing the whole Castroville situation has been how do we get on the planet and we have our ship but I still don't hear how we're getting on the planet that was sort of the whole deal well well yeah but there's a couple of options uh, one you go the real brave approach and hope that nobody's paying too much attention you fly fast enough and if any interceptor comes you politely nudge them off with a couple of well-aimed shots and they do so um the other option is see if uh one of the various bands mucking about on the planet need some additions um oh, or you atmospherically that? insert yourself um I mean, I'm sure I could if we've got a day or two to scour for contacts. We don't, though. Then we get to go with the fun options. Can uh, I... So either fly in or, if we've got the coin, uh, try to atmospherically jump in. But getting out is going to be kind of a bitch. I want to ask a clarifying question to the GM. When we had to dodge because of surveillance and because of the very carefully watched people that enter and exit the elven capital, that does not apply to the rest of the planet, right? Like, technically, we could just fly in somewhere else without it being monitored heavily? Yeah, it definitely won't be monitored heavily. I mean, you imagine plenty of people will the a spaceship landing like not at a space dock because i doubt you're gonna try to land at a space dock since almost every city is kind of overtaken by mercenaries but feel free to go that route too you can always land at a space dock and try to talk your way through the mercenaries otherwise the skies aren't going to be monitored anywhere near they were like sabi rian you're just gonna have to decide where to land and where to hike basically for lack of better words it's always the risk. 
imagine basically like imagine like a spaceship coming down in New York and like way off in the distance it's it's landing in the Adirondack Mountains or something but then they're going to hike to New York City you know like hmm Sucks. just i feel like given the situation of well the continent as a whole there's no way that any entrance won't be somewhat investigated and i think the key is how to deter that investigation or at least the initial one and then hide the ship so we can get going yeah and i'll, I'll straighten it up a little for y'all as a gm real quick uh varso dr lynn you would know that your hiding spot is just north of queen's rock i pulled you out of the map here oh, okay so queen's rock is like a relatively big like port city in casterville on the continent of the colonies you know that your hiding spot i hide in spot her hiding spot is like just north it's in a cave of queen's rock like y'all's hiding spot uh so plenty of if you see this there's plenty of land there even further to the north it's just how far away you want to land how much you want to hike because as you've all been told and kind of know the castroville lands that aren't inhabited are relatively dangerous that's fine and then you have and then you have mercenaries and adaptation serum and everything else kind of going on you said hiding uh, place you mean not this is uh dr lynn yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, I, I'll be at our hiding spot, or at our spot, or something. Like, that's the text she sent him. Okay. So it's a, it's a spot that, like, he knows of, and I'm telling him, like, that's the, that's the spot he knows, basically. I think between all of us, fighting won't be a problem. I, I think it's honestly the easiest just to land into the wilderness and then hike our way there and make our way back. It's certainly well, the quickest. I mean, last time we encountered Adaptation Serum Enhanced Creatures on Castrovel, things did not go particularly well for some of us, some of us being me. But if we were to land in a place like Queen's Rock and then we had to extract her, the mercenaries would certainly raise a fuss. I think it's... Yes, yes, I, I just mean not to underestimate what we may be encountering in the wilderness. Well, I will say... It's your ship, your your choice. Uh, mercenaries aren't necessarily going to care about getting somebody out if, if they're not of interest. Is this somebody important on the planet? Not in the grand scheme of things, no. In theory, they don't care. Um, unless there's some reason that they should, but... Uh, that's what so I'm there's concerned always about. the possibility of uh, your average grunt watching the port's not gonna ask an, the right questions and enough of them to negate the possibility that we can just land and have a BS story as to why we're on planet. Precious cargo and I don't really want to be leaving a ship in a dock that we don't trust. And it depends sure. on the cargo that she wants to bring with her if it's a friend of Dr. Lin I just kind of slap the table and stand up great so we'll be headed off then and mm -hmm. I just start walking towards the ship so she always this just exciting yes she and no in a good mood she's very clearly grumpy <laughs> yeah yes yeah Aizen is trying to be diplomatic with the, like, she just recently died and got reincarnated. A lot's well, happened recently. We'll, uh... She'll go back to, well, probably will go back to how she usually is, but, um... There are plenty of times where she's a bit like this, so... Just kind of go with it. Yeah, sport, you, you died, you'll get over it. You're not Just, Nanal, so up. she doesn't hate you. <laughs> Nanal. Nope. Don't know who that is. Sounds like they Good. suck. <laughs> yep. All right, you're 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 much better off than you think. Uh, already got the right opinions. 
Wait, that I had it written case? in your backstory that y'all were best friends. Wait, hold on. <laughs> that's, you that's, are Nano and Gish Fuse. That, that's Listen, for, that's waffles, for I'm blending in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, he'll, Caliban will finish off his drink and then just head on after. Uh, like once Take Caliban, a look at the ship. Once Caliban like, steps up and like even if he's still within earshot, Len will say to Mo. I, I um, I, I do I do feel like Zeha has a bit of a cause to be bothered. Uh, could you rephrase? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Like, she's she she died. Yeah, yeah, I I know. And that is a disturbing thing to happen all around. Dying is it's death. What what more Yeah. I fucking know. Do you know how close I've come to dying several times so far? And I believe me, I understand as much as pretty much anybody else here about the closest to what dying is actually like. She's obviously first place, but you know I'm just saying Give her time. I'm not trying to say, oh, she'll go back to normal. I'm not trying to say that. But that's why I'm saying lots happened. Okay, well, I I, I was just saying. <laughs> she then gets up and leaves. <laughs> Isaac, Isaac just hasn't been watching this and is like, oh, oh Dr. God. Len trying to communicate is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I say in my head, or in uh, Eisen's head, did that only confuse me, or are you kind of lost too? Uh, I need to be more <laughs> drunk for this. Uh, it's fine. Everyone's trying to deal with what's been happening. I'm just trying to not, you know, get everyone killed before I deal with my things. <sighs> Fair point. As we're walking to the uh, ship, I'll say, you know, I kind of wish... I realized we were... I, I assume Len told us where we were going. Mm. I kind of wish I knew it was a desert. I've always wanted to try wingboarding. If you want to, like, get a sheath, I could just throw you. <laughs> I got a feeling it's not going to work quite the same, but I appreciate the thought. Yeet. Maybe we'll give it a try. We'll see. <laughs> you were looking for content <laughs> for that void thing. I figured that'd work. That is true. Oh, this it has be fun already for that. been like, like while everybody's out, like taking over the pilot seat to just at least start up the engines and like mm -hmm. get things moving. We did uh, have Caliban. that uh, like fresh start thing installed after the big squid attack. Yeah, it only so takes a minute. Or like, around. Good. Yeah, instead of Caliban's in the cockpit yeah. as well, just kind of sitting in one of like the co-pilot seats while you're booting it up, just. Looking around, looks like he's familiarizing himself, and he he's just like doing that like gunslinger twirl with like the the big four barreled gun, uh, just off to the side. Without uh, making eye contact, up. she points you to <coughs> the like computer um, hub, like the main computer hub. You'll be over there. Familiarize All yourself right, um... over there. You got a problem with me being on the ship? Did I do something wrong? Did Arvin do something wrong? No. I can sort him out. You just say the word. <laughs> she kind of like picks You'll herself up from from like the computer screen and sighs. <sighs> no. I apologize. It's honestly not to do with you at all. And I'm just a bit on edge. Um Forgive my rudeness, but I am grateful to have someone of your talents aboard. I don't need you to be grateful. I just want to make sure I wasn't imposing. No imposition. Um, well, while we wait for the rest of them, um, I can also show you to your quarters and anywhere else around the ship. Do you have any other questions? Quarters will be good. I'll set down my stuff and then uh, I'll play around with the computers. 
Uh, I'll probably... Anything I shouldn't fiddle in the computers with? Um, not particularly. Grace isn't attached right now, and she likely won't be just due to, um, an issue with, uh... Security. Yes, security. So... And do not touch the folder labeled, Time Has Passed Rule 34, whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would be yes, the first that, one I open. That, that title folder, uh, Black Hole don't go in there it's like nested like three folders down in there but we just don't even we just don't even go there uh <laughs> yeah there's also a folder for eisen's flying tunes that no one else touches <laughs> <laughs> um if you happen to delete that folder i won't blame you <laughs> and no, okay. she secretly likes uh shimmer and rock <laughs> like <laughs> like <laughs> hardcore yeah um she'll just familiarize you with the med bay the uh the kitchens the dining hall um and she'll probably give you the would you like uh personal quarters or would you we can ask the others if they would be comfortable bunking with you whatever everybody's good with i'm not picky i've lived in a very cramped uh barracks much of my life whatever does I have a quick question based on based on all of this. Yeah. We may have to step backwards in time for a second to take care of this. Oh, did zombie. Te did Tetsu take the, take the squawks? Yep. So and I did, was. And did the party allow him to? I had a plan for that. No, Tetsu did not take the squawks because Tetsu doesn't know what. He, a, he's not going on his ship. B, he basically did like the food hopper thing where there's just shitloads of food and water uh, stashed and ready to go. Uh, and B, I, I, I was going to see if uh, where Caliban slept to see if he realizes. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. So Tetsu doesn't care about them, gotcha. He, that's, that's not, that's exactly the opposite reason of why they're not with him. I'll simplify the question yeah. for you then. Um... Are you a fan of animals? Sure. Love them. I just point to one of the rooms, that which was Tetsu's like bunk. Um, well, I go to it and I peek my head in. You can see that Len and Tetsu have pushed their beds together so that they can spoon. <laughs> You would think Tetsu is the big spoon, but he just no. like pulls Lin over, oh no, yeah, just over him like a blanket. Lin would be the best big spoon because of all the tentacles. I can't imagine. He just Lin he get all kinds of wrapped up, but the big. Yeah, there's oh, there's no other choice. That's nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she does say, uh, double check with the rest of the crew, make sure they're comfortable. Um, but otherwise, enjoy, and I'll go back to getting us off the ship and back into danger. And she'll, like, turn around and go back to... Sounds lovely. And he kind of steps in, and then, like, a second later, he goes, I stepped on something, but I can't see it. I'm oh, going to let the crew deal with that. <laughs> it's here. It's not an out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I isn't just like as he's walking up from the gangplank through the system, hears that, just peeks his head in, and then like I don't care, and just walks by. <laughs> wow, cold. Eisen hates animals. No, Eisen's got two animals inside him. That's true. <laughs> yeah. My my animals give me stat boosts. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't need something to be useful to love it. Uh, That's why we put up with you. <laughs> no. Is that why he loved Dr. Lin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am very useful. No more healing uh, but, for you. But the GM. That's fine. Uh, change much, honestly. But yeah, Cal Caliban just uh, situates himself unless Dr. Lin kicks him out. Uh, and there's not much to situate. He doesn't have a lot of stuff. Uh, Len does seem surprised you are in this room but he won't say anything about it uh in <laughs> internally he's wondering why he uh Cal caliban is not like using the guest room 
I but very specifically said to him. check with the rest of the crew. Len, 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 does, Len doesn't have the guts to kick him out of the bedroom, so he won't say anything. <laughs> this oh, is, that's this is how I learn about the other party members, Zaha, okay? Uh -huh, uh -huh. You yeah. just insert yourself into shit and then see if they yeah. speak up. Yeah. yeah, their reactions is a way of learning, yes. Len, Len's a beta. Understood. <laughs> no, Len's oh. a sigma right. male. Yeah, sigma male. Right, you guys all bunk up together in one room, get ready, okay. and then take off from Absalom Station. Let's go! Head out towards Casterville. We see the ship. Head that way. And that's where we'll take a break. Boo! Boo! Perfect. I'll say... No, that's it. I'll wait. Never mind. I'll get all right. I'll say. I'll say nothing. I'll, I'll say. I'll say. Now I'll we're gonna say. go on break. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'll refresh your drinks. Run to the bathroom. Let the doggos out. All that good stuff. Uh, take care of yourself. Stretch. Uh, do what you need to do. We'll be back here shortly, and we'll catch you then. Be right back. Heck yeah. That's how they died. And that's how they all died. Right. All right. I died. Except for Tetsu, who's going to start the second party. Let's go. That's true. Tetsu lived. I want to be Dr. Drill. Okay. Oh, you would be a good Dr. Drill. Let's do this. You've all left towards Castroville. Uh, going to take about a day to get there. Much like it, whether you drift travel or just go there like last time. Does anybody have anything to do during that day? I think... I'm editing. Editing? For sure, for sure. So you can... Basically, like, four more days left remote. Um, Probably from when we, like, took off. As soon as, like... You know, autopilot and gauge, or as soon as, like, immediate captain duties are, are complete. Um, Zaha just goes into her room and closes the door. And kind of sequesters herself for a while. Um, something that I think Zeha would have been working on on the days that she was still on Absalom and uh, just kind of just working through both her emotions, both everything that happened. Um, she probably would have been working on composing like a a song um and she wasn't like it's kind of one of those things where like she doesn't know quite how to process her feelings and it's something that she would just kind of started one of the times because she wasn't going out and about and it's like when you're just kind of like sitting alone in your room she got a little inspired and started writing something she just wrote and ended up that was what she kind of continued to work on for a while and something about the fact that like she's putting herself back in immediate danger, pushes her to like, I want to finish this and I want to record it and just get it out on the web. So that's what she's going to do. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, give me a performance roll. No, you for have sure. a, Yeah, as you're kind of like singing this, going over it, coming up with all the small parts to it there's this small resonance with you through your headband that just like almost harmonically makes this perfect but it's on like it's almost even imperceptible to you if that makes sense it's just it's there and uh so yeah go ahead and make me a performance check with a plus five and to Wow, entertainer would work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Your your Profession. performer check is what my brain is saying. But yeah, entertainer check. 
That's a 21 plus 5, you said? Yep. Uh, 26. And I could... I think... I don't know if I said it. When she's making this song, like... It, it, she, she's not intentionally processing her emotions or anything like that. She's just feeling things and making a song and then I think it unconsciously becomes she actively writes it thinking about specifically her grandmother and it becomes yes this process of death that she went through but it it just becomes like almost like an ode to her grandmother for sure for sure uh feel free to tell me you don't have this I just want to put you on the spot as a player uh is there any like is there any tone or true like uh not i won't say like true meaning but like uh, is there any like subject matter of the song is like what i'm trying to think like is it a song about reincarnation like doing better your second time like yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, is yeah, there yeah. Any... i think overall it has this um it has a very like melancholy like ballad tone and it's one of those things where it's not it's not a pop song. It's not a rock song. It's nothing. It's nothing quite so upbeat. And those tend, this may sound very bad, but like, you know, sometimes when artists always have like one of those songs on their albums, they tend to not be very like, eh, people skip over them or whatever. Um, but then every once in a while, there's one that kind of like hits home. Like that's kind of what I want this to be. And I think the, the specific message in it is more about like things left undone and things left unsaid um so just a like unexpected and abrupt endings and how that can affect both those that are left behind okay uh yeah so you got a 26 total you are working on the song and you finally end up recording it and you're able to get it in this one perfect take again it's this i imagine as an entertainer especially with this check you dress up for the video a little bit like whether you put on like a performing dress or whatever uh you you can stop me. Yeah, I think I think the way she kind of sets it up is she puts the recording like in the corner or like at the bedside table or something like that. And it's just almost like a very intimate recording where she sits like half on the bed, like a leg like folded under. Um, she, she does. I mean, she has the nano like dress thing. So she does kind of just but it's casual. It's not a performing thing. And it's not something that I suppose that anybody who might be following the perspective of Madeline, it's not what her typical thing is because that's not sure, how sure. she's been brought up. She's always been very purposeful and this is just like a surprisingly intimate rendition of a song. Um, hoping that it's the, the music, it's the music star in their bedroom song. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate to, I, I don't know why I'm bringing this up. I think I'm just thinking Taylor Swift and I don't know why. <laughs> I asked one of them. What's up, Isaac? I was curious. Can we, like how much of this can, have we heard? Like this ship isn't soundproof. Would it have carried out to the rest of us? Um, I think so. If anybody, she probably. I'm gonna step back to when the, we were on Absalom because we were sharing basically an apartment. You might have heard like humming and like figuring out like things like that of like. Mm -hmm. No, not that. Like and like, try, just just composing really. Um, and then, I would say that the room on a starship might be even more insulated than necessarily an apartment, uh, just because of like the metal. Uh, I agree. Uh, so I think, I think it's weird that it does leak out. Okay. Actually, like I think normally you would never hear anything, and for some reason. There's like a reverb happening that's like that's emanating through the door. For sure. So I can agree with that. Yeah. So y'all like if y'all are walking down the hall, like normally you don't hear voices in a conversation. Like Tetsu's definitely talked to the foxes or Dr. Lamb. Like you don't hear those voices bleeding through. 
Uh, but you do hear the song every once in a while. <laughs> kind of bleeding through. Uh, so yeah, say with your 26, you get this really nice take of this song kind of recorded. Uh, and it's honestly... I mean, it's not perfect. There's room for improvement, but it is everything you want it to be. Yeah, I think the imperfections just make it more authentic in this type sure. of environment. Um, and she, like, l once it's done recording, she, like, picks up the, the comm unit and looks at it and then just uploads it as is. Okay. We'll see what happens with that eventually. I'm looking forward to your rival here again, and like, <laughs> like it's gonna be so good when she like. Oh, rests. that emo phase. Yeah, yeah it's, it's gonna. You, be just you like, immediately yeah. get a call from your mom. Did you die? <laughs> yeah, oh, no, no huh? that, you're wrong. You're already playing her mom wrong. She wouldn't call. <laughs> she sent a text with hundred credits. Sorry. <laughs> well, Sorry, well no. She, she sends you. She sends you a, a zill with. Literally a thousand yeah. credits, and the attached message to the Zell says, "Sorry, you died." No, it, it's yeah, comments well on the song that she did wrong, <laughs> right? Like yeah. she, she like Zells you, like she sends you money, and then with it is a list of comments where you made mistakes in the song. So Next time, perform it in a studio. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just a blank card that reads "My condolences" on the front. <laughs> <laughs> she forgets to even sign it. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. She, she didn't forget this nowadays. It, it's your, it's her, <laughs> it's her secretary who faked her signature, saying, "I love you." You're very familiar uh, with the secretary's signature. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say Caliban has been out outside, like on the computer, doing what Zeha said, which is familiarize yourself with the computer. And so, his people are very much like dirge writers. It's basically their cultural history, um, and so he's just kind of like bop. It's like a sad, morose song about like gotcha. okay. loss or a lot of times soldiers like seeing them um, and stuff. So uh, he's a morning just, song. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's kind of the Irish have a lot of them. Um, but uh, so he's kind of like bopping. Along, yeah. He's bopping along to that and just kind of at the same time, there's like multiple. He's got multiple like little vid windows open of just loops and loops of like internal security footage of the ship and just like of past weeks of like these people mucking about in the public areas not in the private but like wherever they've got ships he's like access the computer logs and not doing anything nefarious but there's like search like he's openly just facebook stalking all these people just going <laughs> Basically, he does not know any of them, and he is yeah. trying to learn everything about them before he gets on this planet where, like, everything's fucked. So, he, so you're you know, Googling... Sure. He doesn't hide it. Uh, I'm Googling and just watching, like, you guys screw around in the halls and stuff like that from, like, weeks ago, and, like, he sees you, who Tetsu is. And... You see weeks and weeks of video, and only one where everybody sits down and eats together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts. No, Aizen, Aizen eats with Tetsu. Like when Tetsu made a meal, Aizen made a pre like a, a like. No, no, no. Everybody eats wall. together. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Why does he Most sit of on takes their stuff down to the? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, at as you're watching videos of security footage, uh, there is a. Um, yeah, he doesn't hide if anybody walks past. Like he's unbeknownst just watching. Are you in the room doing it or just like in the common areas? No, the, so like the... the computer hub in the secure, like the computer that runs the like the main ship, like he is just standing uh, in that area, that very public area, just kind of going through security files of the ship and and searches of you all. Gotcha. Uh, well, at the um, uh, as you're there, uh, there's a little bobblehead on the uh, pilot seat that looks like a little shimmer and Sara or yeah shimmering and um that's just wasp uh transformed into something that's just watching what uh caliban's up to hmm. <laughs> wait hold on i want to see if i notice it like it had to uh, get there right you. or or was it always there 
It wasn't always there. Um, Eighteen. No. Okay. Adorable. But yeah, yeah he just, is. I just say no. Yeah. He is just kind of chilling there. Nothing crazy. For sure. Uh, anyone else have anything they are doing for the next day? Uh, yes. Eisen, not wanting to blow up the ship with his energy surges and needing something to do to, like, just relax a little bit, he would have taken over the gym again and started doing, kind of very similar to Zeha, he would have started doing, uh, like, put in music and started doing traditional dances and traditional, like, theater actions, um, of, uh, of like the battle parades back home, you know, something that's regimented and that's classic that like connects him back home, but like allows him to get all, all of his energy out and not be, you know, blowing up the ship console or something. Okay. Uh, Dr. Leonard mode, anything don't don't or mo is editing. Uh, Dr. Lin, anything. Don't feel like you have um... to. But I want to be cool too, Waffles. <laughs> uh, you're not. Lens you're not. Of the, oh, okay. That, uh, well, it would be cool if this. Never mind. Uh, Len spent most of his time just in the like gunner seat, just shooting at asteroids as we pass by them. You know, trying to get better at shooting the guns because he wasn't trained for this, but he doesn't want to not do it. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay. So I mean, I'm sure Calvin can notice that he's kind of amateurish but he has a lot of heart and that's what really matters what is your computers <laughs> dr lynn my computers that's <laughs> yeah, um, right really really low actually it's 11. okay All right. it, better than tetsu's mm -hmm. yep not better than caliban's gear it okay hey, that's better than tetsu's i haven't invested points in computers since like level one. <laughs> oh no i'm not more. a smart man <laughs> Hey, mine, mine, mine's decent. All right. You guys and girl arrive at and non -binary. Castro and non-binary. Sorry, I forgot about that. That's my fault. Alex, you, <laughs> you all are and robots. <laughs> forgot about wasp. And what about Grace? What about Grace? All right, Grace, we're on Grace the planet. <laughs> Grace Thanks for robot. landing us. What about the ship? <laughs> <laughs> and ship folk. All right, you all arrive outside of Castroville. Uh, basically, right outside of orbit, ready to pop in when you need to. Uh, everybody that is trained in piloting and or anything that would give you military type information give me a check all right 31. i'll be rolling medicine do you have a preference between bodyguard and pilot for me no uh pilot is higher i'll do pilot 14 25 cap do you say 31 26. calvin is that a piloting yes sir check? piloting Okay. Uh, Eisen, Moat, and Caliban. Say I got 23, so she gets nothing. Rude. <laughs> uh, but I, Eisen, Moat, and Caliban. You guys all kind of come together, talk some things over, uh, like best ways to enter the planet. And you realize you probably have three to four options. Whether they're all good is not exactly up there. So, two options Caliban has already come up with. You can just land at the mercenary place, like land right at the uh, Queen's Rock, and call it a day and just see what happens if you land there. And then walk up towards the north, where, where the hideout is. Uh, you can land towards the north and just trek it through uh, the plains 
You can also land in the wilderness and just trek it through. Uh, that would be more to the east. And you'd be trekking through the wilderness instead of the plains. You get the only plus there, you get the sense that the trees might provide you a little bit of cover from being seen from the city. You would have to go less far out. You would just be in the wilderness. All of that said, you all rolled high enough to know that you can land at night. But it will be more dangerous. You would have vastly more cover. You'd think it would be much harder to see you. Basically, my DC would go up to see you. But your checks to land, while, like you're already going to have to make checks, but your checks to land would also be higher. If Is this being... Well, everybody knows that, right? You said yeah, that. we're discussing it. All three of them know it, and I'm sure they're, they're telling you. I doubt they're keeping it a secret, so... No. I think that... It's with the risk. I think. Do we want the double security of the wilderness at night, or do we want to just land in the plains at night and wilderness? Make a deck? Because it'll keep cover when the ship's down as well, on the ground. And. Uh, well, uh, sorry. Good. I understand that's dangerous, and we don't have to necessarily traverse it at night. But I'm a little curious if there are perhaps other traces of the adaptation serum on this area of the forest. Is that a bad thing? Very. It can yeah. be. Uh, no, it one is, thing is predominantly a bad thing. Love it. Uh, one thing I'd like to uh, hear from Len. So you would know the most about what visibility there is around this area so would you think it's better to go to the plains or do you think it's better to go into the forests waffles i think it would be safer to go to the forest right uh in terms of visibility you do know it would be much harder to land that's up to you if you have trust in eisen uh basically what you know about this area and like the colonies there is a relatively low like visibility cloud i'll call it a fog cloud for lack of better words that hangs uh and you know that some of the trees to the right depending on where you go uh are almost equivalent with the fog cloud i have a question waffles just from pilot knowledge like does this not seem to be an area we could fly like super close to where we need to go and just kind of hop drop in grab the package and get the hell out yeah, I mean, you definitely could do that. You just, like, 100% you'd be within eyesight of Queen's Rock. Oh, would it's that know, close. Would you, gotcha. would you know to be a mercenary hotspot? Yeah, like, she probably yeah. walked half a day. Uh, so, like, sp spaceship visibility, you'd definitely be seen. So, this is not a place we're trying to get to within Queen's Rock. Well, this is a place off of Queen's Rock? Yeah, it's a little to the north uh, for the sake of the map that you see here. It's probably in between the N and the S uh, <laughs> of Queen's Rock, like of the letters itself. Got it. Mm -hmm. If that if that makes any sense. But it's it's like half a day north walk of Queen's Rock. Puppy. Gotcha. The wilderness is closer then. It's harder to land, but with a little help, I think I can do it, no problem. And yes, we do have uh, all of us here that perhaps could assist um yeah i think that'll be safer and a lot safer or yeah, if you don't mind a co-pilot i can certainly help or for sake mind. of joking you can always land way up to the northwest in carrick <laughs> <laughs> just because it's named carrick spelled wrong but, yep. you know yep oh yes i just feel no, like it's spelled right. <laughs> carrick is it wrong yeah I've Sorry. heard it's just a, a silly place with a lot of angry people, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but I just had to here. talk about inserting your spaceship inside Carrick. So. <laughs> yeah, park your <laughs> ship inside me. <laughs> um. All right, so let's park at night. We don't necessarily have to traverse at night. We just simply have to land at night, get under the cover of the trees, and perhaps it would be best to actually stay at the ship until daybreak to keep an eye see if anybody comes to investigate 
honestly, it'd be also easier to extract her if we're looking to do it quickly. At night, if we're, if we're close enough and we think we can manage, it might be easiest. My only, uh, we can I always leave the next night. I don't disagree. My only other concern is that we don't exactly know her status, and while she said she was going to go there, if there are any complications, those are complications for us as well. Mm. Well, but first and foremost, we should land. Yes. Um, I'll kind of look over at Caliban. You mentioned piloting skills. Is this something that yeah. you think you could finesse? Yeah. And I want to simply, like, I, as, as impossible as it is, can we compare, in character of a sorts, y'all's piloting? Yes, but the yeah, Eisen just whip out the VR. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, Eisen he, hears this and is like, "I've done very well so far. Thank you very much." <laughs> what? Are you... I mean, I can always assist. What are you uh, piloting? I've got, a, I've got a strong plus eight, but piloting modifier is not exactly translated to gunnery. I'm a very good gunner. Uh, <laughs> those are separate things. <laughs> no, they're not. Sure, sure. Piloting. Yes, they are. They are directly so piloting. No, no, no. It's, it's piloting ranks to gunnery, so I'm all good. I'm, it's not a class skill. I'm good. I'm well. Good. Please don't demote me from gunner. Please don't. <laughs> what about you, Aizen? I have my full uh, ranks now, so I'm plus 11 total. And Caliban? I don't want to like intrude. That'd be rude of me. But uh, this is a plus fourteen. Plus fourteen. It's fine. Okay. R Rogues up here. Eh? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is another talk about. Yeah, I mean, Dex is my secondary stat. To be fair, so. Yeah. Hey, it's you know, it's not a competition. I'm just better. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm built uh, different. It's, that, it's different. Now that. Yeah, the important question, this is something like I want to see as a GM. The important question is, like, let's throw it out there. Uh, I agree with Aizen in the sense that I don't think Aizen's messed up anything yet. Hasn't. Like, no. there's been, yeah, been no, some interesting maneuvers and stuff. Would Zeha make the call to put Caliban in the pilot suit? Well, the, basically, ca also, Caliban, uh, I will just say from Caliban's standpoint, he is very much. He would very much be vocal if, if he's like, I I should pilot this. But at the same time, like he he hasn't gauged anything that like he, Eisen seemed capable about, like kind of investigating the piloting options for down here and having that conversation. So I think he's exactly not pushing. He always thinks he's the best choice, though, for most of us. I stand by exactly what I said. Zeho did, which is. She looked at Caliban and said, is this something that you meant? I said, you mentioned piloting earlier. Is this something that you feel particularly confident in? Very. Then I'll leave the decision between you two. And she looks at Aizen. This is not her trying to usurp over Aizen. This is just, we have somebody new who specifically mentioned piloting. It's up to you two to figure out who wants to do it. Um, you didn't, you didn't put me in the running, I can't help but notice. <laughs> huh, what was that, Dr. Lynn? I couldn't hear you in you the gunner seat. You, I, I think you misspoke. Oh. I just, you know. Alright. I mean, it's, it's your ship, I take the lead. I'll be the better man. <sighs> I'm a little emotionally compromised, considering everything going on. I'll let you do it, but I'll be at your... I'll be helping. If anything goes wrong, I should. Yeah. I hope he rolls yeah. a natural one. I, I can't really... wait for Cal Benefil. <laughs> I really hope he does. Because... I, I'm looking. I'm looking at my chicky nuggy ready to go. <laughs> because as we fail, you know the smuggest comment from Eisen is going to be looking right at Zeha. Just going to be like, just the <laughs> Zeha most didn't smug say... look. Move over, Aizen. She said, "Hey, Caliban, how are you with this?" <laughs> you put you put it out there. It's, yeah. it's the captain's fault. <laughs> but she will if if Caliban like takes over the pilot seat. If we're like doing this right now, um, she will kind of look towards Aizen and and like as you as she passes by, she just kind of like lower her voice and just say, "I do want you close by. Assist him as best you can." 
he just kind of grumbles. Like, you hear that, like, gravelly sound of rock hitting rock as he's just like... Mm. All right. With that decision made, we're going to drop into a very faux star starship combat. Ooh. Right, Ooh I've, come, I've come up with some some ideas for how I think this would work basically in the infiltration to a planet since y'all seem to do this a little bit. In the engineering like phase in, I say engineering phase I really don't want to go through all the phases because I think it's a little useless until we actually get into combat. So as an engineer you can take an action basically to stabilize the power that is necessary to enter whether that is shutting off the engines at certain times bringing them back up supplying a boost etc that will give the piloting check a plus two the captain can act whenever they want they can decide what they want to do that will give a plus one through five and or a minus one through five based on roles and all of these can provide minuses too i should say uh even the engineering but you can give a plus or minus as the captain based on role play and what you decide to do can the computer gunner, expert help oh. computer expert can't help but gunner you can provide what i'm going to call distracting fire uh so <laughs> i hate when you yell with your mic meter <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but basically you are shooting at other spots and if you're doing it at the right time obviously checks involved then you're taking eyes off of where your ship would be coming down computer you're able to uh, cloak your ship from scanners you're not not like you're invisible but you're sending out like uh, anti-scan waves kind of thing another plus two and then for this sake, because I've seen everything that's gone down, I will also allow a co-pilot. Is there anything else that the um, gunner can do that basically my, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, but like even distracting fire or like throwing off, it still alerts people that something is happening. It definitely could. And that's why like Dr. Lane could jump on the computers right now. Yeah, I think that's and or, the best. And or, and or a co-pilot, et cetera, et cetera. Like, y'all can move between each round, obviously. Okay. So. okay. I guess I'll start on computers then. <laughs> Whatever. You can put this your hat back on, then. <laughs> this is similar to something I've heard a podcast do recently that I listened to. Let's call him Glass Cannon. But <laughs> very, very on, faux. Uh... I'm very faux Starfinder combat, so. Or Starship combat. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So, we're not going to go through all the phases and everything. Piloting check will be done at the end. Uh, it will get... I will go ahead and tell you, there's going to be three piloting checks. It is going to get harder each time. And I will tell you, without aids, the last one would be very hard. So, like, expect to need, like, a plus 15, like, with your bonus and aids and stuff to have a chance. I'm at a plus 14, so... Well, I mean, there you go. You need, like, one aid to have a chance. Can he also use the computer charges? Do those, like, the ship stuff also apply, or is it just our stuff for this? Because we still uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can use... Everyone can use computer charges. Okay. Save one for the pilot, please. Yes. That's a How many of those do we have to use? I think uh, three. Three trail. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's two or three, yeah. Let me double check. Um, right. What else? Anyone got no, any it's, questions? Sorry, it's it's two it's two bonuses of plus two. Oh yeah, y'all changed computers recently, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you so can we'll... always hook Grace up. Nah. No, no we're good. You. Just take her out good of the try. box. Yeah. Hook her mm -hmm. up. Yeah, I'm gonna hook you up, bitch. Alright, so let me let me get this straight though. We're going into the wilderness in the dark. Yep. 
All right, so that's going to add some difficulties to both of those. And then... Yeah, you're just going to land in the dark, and we'll see what happens from there, basically. Yeah, I cannot fail this. We have picked the hardest option cannot. for ourselves, basically. Statistically speaking, there's no way we fail, guys. Come on. Uh, no, we can definitely no fail. I just, I'm saying, like, I'm not, I can't allow it us to fail. Yeah. But... Can't have Caliban in this spot and then fail. <laughs> because, you know, I... we start failing as soon as Caliban joins. Hmm. That's mm. true. That's true. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready for the uh, start? Yeah, ready? I, I will, I will say as a final, um, hurrah, uh, hopefully the, uh, advanced medium range sensors we have installed are somewhat beneficial um so i don't know if that's part of the consideration but if it is cool i mean if you are sensing for stuff but that wouldn't there would be no pluses for that probably so i would just say for like the get like a topography of the land to kind of get a sort of map to follow to find and be like okay we know we have like this altitude sure sure yeah and i will i will say if anyone has any creative things that I just did not state. This is like combat. Those those are your attacks. Feel free to throw stuff at me. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to get a topography of the land and stuff like that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Let's start with we're going to go in the same round every time so I keep it straight. Engineer. That's me. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure we have a prep our ship prep to uh en enter atmosphere. Okay. Power wise and such. For sure, for sure. 33. That is a success. That is one plus two. Captain, remember you can act anytime. I'm probably not going to call on you. Just tell me when you want to act and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Are we like entering the. This, this will be your first. In so it's going to be three piloting checks. Basically, you're going to enter from space into like towards the gravitational pool. And then you're gonna be entering the atmosphere, and then you're gonna be landing. If that if that makes any sense. Yep. Um, so it's gonna be sig significantly easier, medium, and harder kind of thing. All right, sounds good. All right, Doctor Lin, I think you're on computers. Yeah, I'll do a computers check. Seventeen. That is not a plus two. Oh. <laughs> What's the DC right, to get the plus two? That's what I got. Uh, right now it's twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm gonna save any hero points for later when it actually gets harder. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember? Said, right, don't right forget. Now it's twenty. All your DCs are also going up as the piloting check goes up. So. Yikes. Yeah. Don't forget. You can one of you guys because we're saving one of the plus twos for the piloting check, but one of you can take a plus two for whatever you're doing. From the Doctor Lin still wouldn't have made it because he's yeah. stuck. I know. Can two of us take a plus two and. One saving. Like, I have a plus two piloting. Oh, okay. And then right, yeah. we have a second plus two. Yeah. All right. Uh, Zan, do you want to do anything before I let eyes into or not Tetsu go? <laughs> not Tetsu. That's <laughs> what you are, Caliban. <laughs> not Tetsu. Yeah, you're uh, not I Tetsu. I know. I know. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna basically help with the piloting. Um. I guess what I would like to do. I guess. Actually, what was Dr. Len doing with computers? Scanning? Uh, uh, if he was doing the basic action, he is basically attempting to throw out, like, anti-scan signals. Like, think of, basically, EMP pulses. Like, he's attempting to counteract any kind of scanning that might be coming at your ship. Okay. Um, would I be able to do anything with the computers to assist the piloting check? Like you mentioned with engineering, to make sure that, you know it's in tune with everything that the pilots need. Can I just keep? Can uh, uh, Sure, yeah, Caliban. if you want to use computers, I will tell you that you can, uh, at least for this check, you're able to, this will only be a plus two, like everyone else has, but you'll be able to kind of uh, get a grasp of the gravitational fields and just be able to like direct the pilot that way. Yeah, and basically that's what I want well, to do. I'm, I'm here to orchestrate. Caliban would kind of shout out to you and just go, if you could uh, make us just look like a big floating chunk of metal instead of a ship, uh, I've got a plan for our approach. I don't think that the ship is able to do that. 
I meant signal wise, but Oh, signal wise. Um Yes. I think that is what Dr. Len was doing in terms of negating um yeah. similar. I don't think that I can cuz we need to be like scanning, so I think that's the most we can really do, but I will I'll go with the computers what what Waffles was saying. I'm just going to orchestrate. Do it. Oh wow. That's a 16. That's a natural 2 uh, for oh. a 16. That is a fail. Um um Ooh. Okay. We're at a plus four right now on top of my back. <laughs> All right. Eisen, co pilot. 16, also a fail. Uh, that is a fail. <laughs> you have a plus four, not Tetsu. <laughs> so Cal Caliban is like kind of coasting and he's, he's kind of maneuvered the ship well away from the planet so it doesn't look like, you know, we're doing anything. We're kind of like in like some little local asteroid near some local asteroid cluster and he like flies through it like we're going away from the planet as everybody's kind of preparing to go into planet side and uh as as he feels like the engines and stuff shift to accommodate what he's doing and like he's like watching the signals of the, the computers and he's used to like he's more familiar with like ships that are military ships that are designed to infiltrate and whatever and he's like looking at the signals like Yikes. Um, he, what he does is he kind of he's weaving through asteroids and everything like in this mining belt probably and uh, then kills the engine at one point for the most part and then like kind of spins us about and does like a couple of small light bursts <laughs> I'm glad Vars was having fun uh, Karen, a, I didn't catch any of that. Can you repeat it? Sorry, I was crazy. So, Karen, I was literally about to give you another plus two if you got through all of that without laughing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I sorry, everybody else. Died, so. I was taking a joke. I, I was mean, listening. All of us were jamming to this awesome music, but Barsa was jamming. <laughs> it's so good, waffles. It's really good. Anyway, so yeah, he he basically. Uh, put some very light thrust on it to spin around this one asteroid and then kills almost everything in the ship. And the ship seemingly just shuts down. Um, and... Kills everyone. In the <laughs> no! Ship. No! no, not kills everyone. Just kills like most of the power and just drops our signal very low and just drifts the ship basically at the planet. Very slow and very obviously. Because he's he Perfect. wants to just look like a rogue little chunk of metal or rock. Give me a piloting check with a plus six for your description. I'm not even fucking joking. It's a natural 20. Woo! I wasted the natural Good. 20 on the yeah. easy Wait, one. Waste dude. it now. Ah, uh, dude, come on. Uh, uh, it, it, it is it, a... It, but a good job. It's like 50. Uh, no. It, uh, no, it's 40. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, perfect. I mean, Jesus. Caliban looks very proficient at what he is doing as... You all kind of come together. Some of you fail, some of you succeed, and you're able to make it through the gravitational pulls, even killing power. And you just hear like a... to enter the atmosphere, basically. As, as we're drifting, like a, a half hour goes by, and he goes, "Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys have done this before, but um, you could just relax for a bit. We're gonna be a while." We're just uh, tilted sideways as we're just like, just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slow and steady Wait, no. wins the race. So don't worry. Once we hit Atmo, shit will pop off. All right, let's start back over. Mo. DC 25. All right. So knowing that the um, general plan is to now just lull into the atmosphere, uh, Moat wants to basically prime the engines for a quick pickup so um if there's what Mo wants to do is kind of bolster the um uh, delivery channels for the energy and try to make sure that nothing is going to overload or be uh overtaken by the sudden amount of thrust and uh basically leave everything in kind of a really easy uh display for um, the pilots to quickly and easily orient everything and just kind of quickly get things ready to 
bust. So, uh, okay. Know, Give me a engineering check at a plus two. 35. Easy. Let's plus go. two for engineering. Dr. Lin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can act anytime you want, but Dr. Lin on computers. On computers. I think. Uh, mo you didn't take the plus two, did you? No, I did not. Then, oh, what's up, Zaya? I, uh, and is it cool if I take the... Oh, sorry. Go on, Zaya. That's okay. I, I think that, like, I was kind of hovering, um, like, on my own computer terminal, like, by the pilot, and then seeing that it looks very much like Caliban knows what he's doing, um, I'll stand up and kind of walk over to um, Dr. Lin's station now. Well... Tetsu's old station. Rip Tetsu. Um, we probably don't need him back though. Um, yeah, I mean, Doctor Lincoln do computers. Yeah, we're, we're, we're much good this better way. actually. <laughs> um, so I'll wander well, over to, to Doctor Len's new station, um, and <laughs> I'll just kind of like basically be assisting here um, and captaining. Just kind of like if it, okay, I can't help with piloting right now, so I'm just gonna help you. Let's. Um, Keep an eye as soon as the power gets back on. Um, we need to set out like the timing of the of the pulse and let's scan uh, the trees before we get closer to to see if we can't map a quick like path, flight path, and things like that. Yeah, I'll start right. looking into a weather forecast to see what the fog's looking like. Uh, that way we can get we can get right into it. <laughs> Zaya, give me I'm a already point. practicing with these checks here. Oh my god, that's a natural one. <sighs> I wrote yeah, a two kind of <laughs> You almost still succeeded. Yeah, you wrote a two before. Uh, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, tell me. Tell me if you want to. But Don't give me a negative. Here. Yeah, one, one cheeky nug. Yeah, this will probably give him a negative with a ne with a minor. With a is, that a, is that true? Would it be a natural? I'm not telling. Um... But there are potentials for negative, and if anything would, it would probably be a natural one. Yeah, but natural one for a 19. <laughs> Wait, so I think, isn't I this think... just to, like, aid me? Yeah, this is kind of to aid. Yeah, this is, actually. So. I'm trying to help. So I think seeds. I think Zeha's, like, nerves are definitely, like, on edge, and she's... Okay, I can't do piloting. I'm just going to go over here, and I'm going to, like, point things out to you. But all I'm really doing is pointing out the obvious and probably just distracting you, Dr. Lin. Uh, and like trying to just focus despite Zeha being in his metaphorical ear. Uh, as soon as the power comes back on, Len's gonna open two tabs. On one tab, he's gonna start typing in all the computer stuff to send out this pulse. On the other one, it's a Chrome tab. He goes to weather.com or the space equivalent. <laughs> Check cache with all fog conditions. Overwhelms okay, the power they're supply. Looking pretty good. I, I, I'm gonna give, give myself a plus two on this. Give me a computer roll at even for your plus two and Zao's zero oh. or minus two. Pain. Ooh. Another 17. Yeah. Hold on. All right. Well, okay. I'm going to roll a 20 next round. So I'm going to hero point this. Okay. Okay. I'll look forward you to quickly that take a chicken nugget oh, out of your pocket. 24. I'll shove it in my pants. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 24. <laughs> uh, that's a fail. <laughs> that's a fail. Fail? No. No, 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 no. That's Why do you ball. stop popping off when I need to do a check? Because this isn't what I do. You guys are making me do this. You put a gun to my head. That's true. Oh. You only have a plus eight. You you can't even get the you can't even get the plus thirty on next round. So uh, if I roll a nat twenty, I know I have a plus eleven. Yeah, oh, I thought you said you had a plus eight. Sorry. That's for piloting. That's because you crap. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Isaac, co-pilot. Yeah, uh, Aizen on this, like, seeing the bad weather data, I think swipes it to the side and goes very, like, turn off your targeting computer about this, and just starts to, like, feel out the weather to help him, like, figure out what the hell he's doing in one. the dark. It's gonna be a one. I'm rolling a physical dice so that the computer can't screw me, because it would be a one if I rolled on the computer. But that's not this one. It's gonna be a one. Uh, it's not a one, but it's not good either. It's a six, so that's 19. All right. That's a fail. No, that's a 25, so no help there. We're gonna uh, die. You, you rolled a 25? No, no, no. Uh, no, he's saying he failed. 
Yeah, I failed. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, you have a plus four, Caliban. All right, it's not a hard roll, good. but not not super hard at all. That's a good face. <gasps> natural one. That's, a, that's, that's a like a natural three. Not that's like a natural three face, right? It is a natural three face. Uh, <laughs> Caliban is going to use that cheeky nuggy. I'm glad I did the recap on for today. Wait, really? wait, 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 wait. No, I already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Caliban, it's weird because you've never eaten at Herenthal's before, and yeah. a chicken nugget. <laughs> There's Herenthal's all over Absalom. I've had it like every day for the past month. Oh, okay. So this, but you don't know if yeah. this chicken nugget is like two weeks ago. Chick like you know or like no no like this yesterday's. is this is this morning chicky nugget oh you sure oh. okay all right yeah <laughs> this is a fresh one it's, guys well it's, it's free it's freeze dried freeze dried chicken yeah. nugget fresh never frozen. much much better twelve plus a eighteen so thirty yeah you make it which would have been great for next round yeah yeah all right let's see if the rest of the crew can come together you come are together. able to. Repower up the ship, enter the atmosphere. Oh, sorry, I I did have a description for what he wanted to do. Okay. So basically, uh, basically what he wants to do is do nothing for like way too uncomfortably long. So what he's doing is, as we hit Atmo and we start to drift, everybody knows you want to burn some of that energy so you don't come in too fast and just turn into a fireball. Doesn't do that. He just kind of lets us drift and starts to get shaky. And it's like that that car you owned when you were si 16 and didn't quite work properly. And it starts getting a little too vibratey. And he's doing very small movements to just keep it where, like, we're in the tolerance of what the ship can handle. Uh, and then basically when he has to, he just suddenly punches the engines. Uh, and just, it's a very just jarring, like full stop almost obviously the ship doesn't full stop but it is just slam on the brake moment where everybody just very is uncomfortable as uh the ship spins like a top downwards to break as much speed as quickly and uncomfortably as possible and our altitude is probably way too low i imagine the reason like moat's probably kind of used to it being in like small ships and stuff but i imagine the reason dr lynn eisen and zeha all failed uh, their checks is because like so you're in grab you're in uh outer space right before you enter atmosphere so you guys are kind of like all floating you're a little used to the gravity and then the second not tetsu punches it you enter atmosphere and gravity also kicks in like all at the same time so you guys are kind of sitting flying a little bit you all and take like, 550 you... bludgeoning damage <laughs> perfect, perfect. Perfect. Right. <laughs> But, but yeah, it, I mean, most people are, like, used to passenger ships and shuttles and stuff, and, like, he's flying this thing like it's a, a military dropship. Yeah, he, he's, I would say he's flying it like it's a uh, single-person fighter. Yeah. Yeah, very much. Yep. Not right. how you uh, want to fly. Okay. DC. It's not 30, because I'm not that mean. DC 28. Oh. I thought you were going to say oh. 35. <laughs> 40. Got that on the first round, but... Alright, so... Um, being used to that and actually having been pretty well prepped for what was going on with that one, knowing what was coming, uh, Moat's fine and kind of just knows that um, in-atmosphere engines are going to need a little bit more uh, consistent thrust, so... Um, Basically, uh, Moat is just working on extra methods of heat dissipation because we came in real hot and we're going to have to burn real hot to keep from curse splatting into the ground. And uh, Moat just wants to basically work on that, maybe use the uh, shields to help um, dissipate heat and disperse so that we can keep a good temp on the engines and make sure that they don't go boom. All right. Give me engineering at a plus two. Mud's rolled really well twice in a row. Can they do Don't it again? Change, can they do it? Yeah. 26. Natural nine for a 26. That is what I call G a normal fail. 
you take I... the plus two from the mm. computer? Did I have nope. to say that before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn. I just wasn't sure what the plus two was from. That was all. That was yeah. from the no, description. Gotcha. All right. Rip. Dr. Lean. Um, I would like to take the plus two if that's okay with you, Eisen. Yeah, that's fine. I have plans. Uh, like Dr. Plans. Lin realizes the reason that the, um, that the, like, signal jammer won't properly load and why, like, the bar is spinning so slow is because upon opening Chrome, all of 50 of the tabs that are previously open, opened at once, and Google Damn Chrome Calvin. eats, eats <laughs> RAM like a, like a, like crazy. So Len's yeah. trying to close tabs as quickly as possible. He's both clicking and control w -ing. And so he's closing them as quick as he can, but let's see if it'll be fast enough, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if only Zach Why are these all me. about me? In task. Ni ni 19. <laughs> what are you point, doing? At this point, Not seeing... pressing Alt F4, I'll tell you that much. At this point, see... Well, actually, did he only have a plus two from the computer? Did he also have a plus two otherwise? Uh, None of it matters. You didn't okay. say. He's a so. baby yeah. Even if he did, it, it doesn't matter. I would have given him a plus one for that, so it's a twenty total. Okay. Seeing Doctor Lin struggling with like the previous task that he's doing, I'm going to jump to like the computer next to it, and I want to, because we're in Atmo now. Um, like we, like Moat said, we are hot. So I want to immediately like like do a, a a scan and an almost like a negate scan like i want to scan once and then pulse out to cancel anything that's coming inwards okay you can pick one of those um you can scan or pulse out well i'm gonna hope that uh the pilot's got it so i'm going to focus on negating okay give me that computer check at a plus two 28. That's a 30. All right. That is a plus two for the pilot, not Tetsu. Aizen. Um, uh, seeing this, and now that we're like close enough to the ground, he actually takes like the secondary co pilot controls and turns on like the landing thrusters on early as a means of like helping gyro stabilize everything so that I like so the Caliban has the smoothest means of landing possible without like hitting a tree or something so but, he doesn't uh, have to he will he will reach out to you as you do that and just be like on my mark yeah and and we just turn together and it's just like he tries to get as in sync as possible with Caliban's movement after watching this and kind of understanding as like a military man understanding how to do this he'll try just... to like thrust at just the right moment I'm and he will so keep impressed. telling you how to delay much better uncomfortably. we're working with Caliban than we've ever worked with Tetsu. <laughs> yeah, I think I see the weakly. Just immediately. Wow, Tetsu is saved ever. You know what? I don't even. You I just like got saved by Tetsu. Oh, this is a death. I'm done with you. This I can't is not death. I... Nope, we're done. Okay. So, I got, I got one for you. You ready, Ivan? Yes. I will let you make this roll. It's a piloting check. Or you can decide not to make the roll and give it over to Caliban. Here, here's your caveat. You can make the roll, and if you succeed, Caliban gets a plus four and, and can still use his computers. If you fail, Something with your energy, your electricity, etc. Caliban can no longer use the plus two from the computers. Uh, I have a chicken nugget, so let's let's risk it. All this, right. This fun. It's a flat roll. I'm not giving you any bonuses. <laughs> I'm Sad. so uncomfortable now. <laughs> Sad. Oh well, I have a reroll, uh, and I'm stating beforehand that if I do fail, I will reroll this. Here comes the I know one. you will. I will make oh, you. Oh, I make it. Oh, oh. oh. oh thank fucking God. Look at that. So, I, so mechan mechanically, just to throw this out, y'all can put whatever flavor on this y'all want. Uh, Aizen is actually 
helping you quite well, like whatever whatever's happening, Caliban, and is a seems to be a proficient pilot that is providing some really big assistance since you get a plus four from the role and you still have the computer. So I get a plus from four from him. Right? Yes. It's from Eisen. So I have a plus eight total from the somebody else succeeded. Zeha succeeded. Yes. And plus two from computers. So I have a plus eight. Uh, so basically Caliban tells uh, Eisen as he sees him like go to like give him a gentle descent. That's unfortunately not what he wants. And he's like, wait, wait. And he just delays him and delays him. And this ship, what he's trying to do is to make sure that this ship looks like it came from an asteroid field. Looks like a rock drifting. Uh, Eric, you're my favorite drifting towards the planet, hits the atmosphere, falls towards the Earth, and just smashes into the ground. He wants this to look like just a, a everyday asteroid strike. It happens all the time. Out in the wilderness, nobody cares. So he has been trying to keep that profile on the descent, and so his goal is... They've slowed down some, but unless somebody's paying a lot of attention, his hope is that they just go, ah, Shit, shit came in from Atmo and struck in the forest. Oh, well. Um, and so he just waits and waits and waits. And uh, we'll find out <laughs> if, if, if we really do strike. It'll be over quick. <laughs> you know? uh, but he goes, wait for it. Wait for it. Now. And a natural 19. Oh, there we go. Or ooh, ooh. a crazy number over 40 with yeah. the plus 8. Yeah. Um, as he just waits way too long and then just the, the engines flare, everything flares all at once. And with the mist and everything, I imagine we kind of like see the trees suddenly just appear really fast and we kind of scrape right through and hopefully gentle-ish. That's my yeah. job is to make sure the trees don't kill us. <laughs> Re relatively gentle. Uh, you are bending some trees out of the way, but slow enough that you're not impaling your ship or just causing like some major bludgeoning damage uh could have been bad i'll go ahead and reveal a little bit of the gm screen uh, i'd have been rolling some major dice for a fail and your ship would have been kaput and you would have had to go to queen's rock for like a critical fail <laughs> I would that would have been generous with the way he approached this landing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, been no. I, TPK. I agree. Uh I mean yeah, you guys don't think anybody saw you on the scan. Uh everyone kind of did what they were supposed to. What I will say is as you land, everyone feels it land down, rocks for a second. You have obviously out of the cockpit and other windows ability to see into the dark it is pitch black outside because of this thick fog layer there's clearly no moon or anything i assume y'all came down without lights otherwise that'd be kind of mm -hmm. dumb uh, uh, yeah, we were a I basically a giant flaming meteor switch. so <laughs> <laughs> but everyone that is kind of looking out the windows for a second sees like Vroom, this light pop up in the distance and then way over could be half a mile to the left you don't know how far away it is so what the distances really are at this point Vroom, another one oh. pops out Vroom, another one pops up pops out and then that's where we're in the session no oh, you suck. <laughs> Did you roll like a natural 20 to find us? That would be just sad after all that work. Who knows? <laughs>